Did you know that in the early church, the only celebration that took place that was uh, as exuberant as Pascha was the Feast of Theophany. It was those two feasts that highlighted the celebration of the liturgical calendar for all Orthodox Christians, each one being celebrated with much a fanfare and joy. This past week, we celebrated the Feast of Theophany. Yet so great is it in the celebration of the liturgical calendar of the church that the church takes the Sunday before, calling it the Sunday before Theophany, and ascribes to it various hymns that deal with the feast itself. Then the day before Theophany, it celebrates the eve of Theophany, by beginning with the royal hours, con continuing with a Vesper liturgy, hymns all focused on what is to take place on Theophany, and ascribes to that day a strict fast, denying ourselves um, various types of nourishment so that we can prepare ourselves to fully celebrate the feast that takes place the next day. It doesn't end there, as the Sunday after Theophany has also been set aside to coincide with the feast. And today, during the Matins service, and even during the celebration of the liturgy, there were several hymns that were lifted up and chanted, all pointing back to this great feast day of the church. Theophania, Theophania, God is made known. That is what we celebrate. Now, let's pause for a minute. How many of us have ever uh, walked somewhere in a darkened room? You may have done it last night. I certainly did. As we walk around in a darkened room with the lights turned out, we walk a little bit more carefully, even though we are in familiar surroundings, we may still stub our toe, uh, hit our shin against something that we can't see so clearly in the dark, but somehow we manage to get where we are going. Now imagine, if you will, if there was no sunlight and our entire existence was lived at night. If we were in a familiar area, maybe we would be able to see. Certainly our eyes would readjust to the darkness. We may be able to see the shape of things, hear and see other things that we may find to be dangerous to try to protect ourselves. But we wouldn't be able to see in the same way if the sun was on, if the sun was out, or if the lights were on. Now imagine if we were in a place that we did not know, in terrain that was not familiar to us. And even though our eyes may have adjusted to the darkness as we begin to walk, fog sets in. And the more that we progress, the thicker and the deeper the fog. Many of us have driven in that type of fog. And even with headlights, know how difficult it is to see the paved road in front of us and how uh, much we slow down our progression to make sure that we don't fall off of that road and crash and suffer um, some type of bodily injury. Now, listen to the words of Isaiah the prophet that was
proclaimed in today's gospel lesson as well. The land of Zebulon and the land of Nathali, by the way of the sea, beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light, and upon those who sat in the region and the shadow of death, light has dawned. Isaiah foresees the coming of Christ. We were told earlier in the first verse of that gospel pericope that after Christ is baptized in the river Jordan by John, that is the land that he goes to. He is the light of the world. As we hear him proclaim so often, he has come to liberate us and bring us out of darkness. Theo Fania. That is what we celebrate. Not just the baptism of Christ. We celebrate that God has been revealed to us, that we, our eyes, are now opened to see God, the creator of heaven and earth, coming to earth as one of his created. And suddenly, there is light in the world. And what happens when we are used to living in darkness and are now confronted with a bright light? First, it blinds us. And then soon, our eyes begin to adjust and we see with greater clarity where we are, who we are, and where we are going. In some of the hymns that we heard today um, in the matin service, we hear the following words. By the purification of the Spirit, we have been cleansed of the dark, defiled enemy's poison. So what is it that we celebrate and what is it that is occurring when Christ comes to John to be baptized? First, um, his baptism is different than ours. As was the baptism that St. John was offering to those coming to him. The baptism of the Jews was a cleansing of themselves when they had done something or touched something that prohibited them, prohibited them from going to the temple. They cleansed, they washed their outer selves so that they could go into the temple to be able to worship God. But the voice of he who was crying in the wilderness was preparing the way of the Lord. Christ comes to be baptized so that he can show us the way in which we will be able to be baptized by the grace of the Holy Spirit and be bearers of his light. His light that shines in us, that through God's grace lifts away the darkness. You hear at the end of today's gospel pericope that Christ, after this moment, starts to preach, repent, because the kingdom of God is at hand. Again, in today's hymns of the Catavasias, by the dew of the Spirit, he cleanses the persistent fog of sin. What beautiful poetry. We who sat in darkness are not only encompassed by the darkness, but by the manner of our own sinfulness, are overtaken by this fog of sin that prohibits us from even seeing the dangerous way that we walk, seeing how far we have strayed from that straight and narrow path that leads to God and leads back to paradise. Now Christ comes and has opened our eyes through God's grace and through us, 
coming to him, falling down, repenting of the manner in which we have sinned. And again, sinfulness through the orthodox eyes of sin, missing the mark that is Christ. When we fall down and truly repent of the way and the manner in which we have been living our lives, then slowly through God's grace that fog that has disoriented us begins to be lifted. And even in the light of day, on a foggy day, when it's lifted, we see clearer. And how much clearer when that light isn't just the sun, but the true sun of righteousness, the light of God. By the purification of the Spirit, we have been cleansed of the dark defiles, enemies, poison. That's what happens when we descend into the baptismal font on the moment of our baptism. We enter. The baptismal font is also the tomb of Christ. We enter into the tomb of Christ and we come out clothed anew, clothed in the light of God's resurrection, continuing on that path. And in the words, again, of the hymns today, we have set upon a new path, one that leads, not misleads, those who have been reconciled by God to a blessed joy unapproachable. That path that is so clear when, our, when we follow God's light leads us to him to be able to experience a joy that we can't even begin to prepare ourselves for. And I uh, close with, again, the words of the hymnographer. Because what we see and what takes place when we witness Christ entering the Jordan River is earthly. What it implies what is actually taking place transcends the heavens. Through ablution salvation, through blue, uh, the, uh, pure, the process of purification, right? through water, we gain the spirit. Through our descent into the water, we realize our ascent to God. Great are your works, O Lord. Glory to you.